हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू वी एल एस दिस इज फिजिकल डिजाइन कोर्स लेक्चर 17 ऑन फ्लोर प्लानिंग एंड पार्टीशनिंग इन फिजिकल डिजाइन वेयर वी शेल बी लुकिंग एट सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स फॉर दोज हुर इन अकेडमिक्स एंड इन प्रोफेशनल इंजीनियरिंग वर्ल्ड सो फार वी हैव अंडरस्टूड अबाउट सम बेसिक टर्मिनोलॉजीज रिलेटेड टू फ्लोर प्लानिंग स्टेज लाइक एस्पेक्ट रेशियो यूटिलाइजेशन पिंस ports etc we have seen previously that what are the ports how do we place it and we have learned that ports can be placed in multiple layers and from there on we shall be continuing today we know that these ports help in making connection with the neighboring blocks or if it is an entire soc then these ports help in interfacing with the outside world hence a commonly asked question in the interview is what are the different type of ports so the answer to that is that depending on usage there can be many categories so first definition is that there can be data ports then there can be clock ports and there can be power ports so these are three majorly defined categories now based on direction you can have input ports like this where the data flows inwards you can have output ports or you can have some bidirectional ports now the exception here is bidirectional you cannot have data data cannot flow like this and uh, you cannot have data coming like this also so bidirectional will not be in case of that but there are some type of cases where you will have a bidirectional flow such as power ports so now based on your behavior the ports or can also be classified as analog and digital in the digital chip most of the data is digital most of the ports will also be digital but there are some ports which will be of analogous type analog type so in analog you will have some commonly exam commonly used example to provide the answer for for this question is you can have power ports which can have digital and analog power so let's say if there is a port which has we an our name so it could be let's say analog analog port so for that you will have a bidirectional port direction so that is all the type of ports that you can have in your design there are two directions of routing resources horizontal and vertical vertical will be like this and both layers are used for routing different signals and power and clock so everything goes through the routing resources only we will create power grid with these resources and hence the creation of power terminals and power related port placement is very important for providing apt amount of power we will see power about power grid and routing resources later on in detail also for now let us see about power port placement so the rule is that one core ground pad so let's say you have one here so one core ground will be associated with one core power so it will be like if you have one vdd then you should have one gnd ground so then again it is like they should always be in pair for balancing the power properly so this is always vdd ground pair it is like if you have next again vdd then again ground so it will be like this and general rule of thumb is number of power pads are needed is such that one pair of power ground can be associated with four ios or six ios four to six ios you can associate with one power to ground it is general rule of thumb not necessarily it depends upon design also we have already learnt that these ports we generally place them with the equal spacing and generally the width of the ports are also same and the ports are in different metal layers this we have already learnt but this rule of equal spacing between the ports and equal width of the ports this width and spacing rule is not a hard and fast rule it is something which is followed by the tool by default hence it is called as a default rule but there are certain special cases where this rule is not followed and that is called as non default rule short form of non default rule is ndr 
and it is generally applicable for the clock ports why because clock ports are certain special and they are continuously switching hence they can create noise and they need the pulse for rising and falling to be equal so hence to maintain that symmetry and to be immune to noise and should not create noise for other signals we have certain special rules which are not by default applicable to other ports and those are non default rules the most common one is fall that is followed in most of the design is double width so we call it as two width and two spacing and certain times two pitch so that is the rule that is followed in general by default if you have single width single spacing single pitch for other ports so this is for other ports like data and it could be for other ports like clock so this is the rule that is followed by the tool for placing those ports which means that your port of this normal port let's say it has let's say any data port will be of 1 one, 1 one micrometer width and uh, it has spacing of let's say 2 micro 2 micrometer so and uh, pitching pitch also of 2 micrometer in that particular case the this is your default rule and in your non default rule it gets doubled so the pitch will also be doubled that means you will have thicker port the port will also be thicker and it the spacing between the ports will also be larger that will also gets doubled so this is also double spacing and this is also double width the question that asked in the interview is why we use non default rule so the answer is that we need non default rule for the clock ports to make it immune to the noise and it should not create noise also to the other signals so that you can say that noise prevention is the correct answer you prevent the noise for the clock and other signals by making it double width and double spacing so spacing will help you in uh, removing the noise double width is for maintaining the symmetry and getting the lesser resistance because if you have thicker metal for the port then it means that you are essentially getting the more area for the clock to travel and hence double area means you will also have half resistance so lower resistance in the clock path you will get so your latency will also reduce so you can say that low latency you will get in the clock path that is all what you need so you will get low latency low resistance that means you will also have a uh, noise prevention these are the benefits that you are getting by creating the non default rule on the clock path the counter question to this is why can't you use non default rule for the data path also that means you can get more spacing more width for data path also that way you will have more immunity to noise and more uh, lesser latency and uh, lesser resistance so the design will also gets uh, better in terms of latency and uh, other aspects but the answer to counter answer to that is you cannot use ndr on the data path why because if you use in the data path what will happen is your spread your spread of data ports will be more spread of data ports will be more and that means your data ports which could have been accommodated in this area that might take entire design and still there will be some ports which would not be placed that would create congestion also so it is very difficult for the tool to route if you create ports which are which are spreaded over entire design that way you will have a bad placement and bad uh, routing so that is not something which you need and hence you cannot afford to lose all the routing resources just for creating the space and width and hence we should not use ndr if it is not needed one common question that is asked in the interview is how do you classify that your port placement is good or satisfying and you can proceed with other steps that is the one common question that is asked in the interview so we should know what we need to check for before we go further so first thing that we need to check for is 
your ports are placed and equal width and equal spacing is there so equally spaced and in proper assigned metal layer you have all ports are placed so it includes your ports which are data ports and your clock ports and for clock ports if necessary you have the ndr applied that you will check for and then next thing that you will check for is you should not have any unplaced ports in the design so unplaced ports means the ports which are at origin so if this is your die area and this is your core area so there will be origin so it will be the origin of your design and you should not have any ports which are present over here so no unplaced ports in the design you should not have any unplaced ports in the design next thing that you will check for is that blockages are applied over the empty area so blockages applied what it means is you should not you should have you should have a blockage over the empty area so the empty area between core to die even this area which is not used for the placement between the ports this empty area and the entire empty area around core which is not used for port placement it should be blocked it should not be used for placing other cells tool by default will not place any cells over here but just to be sure from your side also by default by, in the flow itself we apply the we apply the blockages like this so you should have all the blockages applied like this around the core second next important thing that you should check for is you should have you should have a proper guard ring applied by, by by guard ring what it means is it is guarding your design so in between die to core you should have a proper uh, a proper ring of metal which is which is connected to the ground so this vss and the vss that goes inside your design that port will be shorted this will be your vss port or terminal which will be shorted with this guard ring so this is created in certain layers so that if any in uh, any unwanted signal that is by some mistake it goes inside your design any metal that signal gets shorted with the vss before going in the design itself and that's why it gets grounded and there will not be any functionality failure in the design for any unwanted routing that happened by mistake so you should have a proper guard ring applied so there should be a guard ring this is generally applied in the complex designs so this is added this could be this could not be necessary but it is has become now a mandatory feature of the designs but this is not a mandatory feature now next question that could be asked in the interview is related to port placement that how do you check for your port placement is is having uh, any unplaced ports or not for that in innovus so in innovus you have command like this so check pin assignment in innovus if you do it will give you the list of unplaced ports next in the if if your interviewer asks you that if you do not use this command how can you check so you can check by visually going into the origin there should not be any ports last but not the least that you check for in your port placement quality is you should not have any undriven undriven input ports you should not have any undriven input ports or you should not have dangling ports if you have any dangling ports in your design then you should have a valid reason it could be a feature addition in the future future for that sometimes design team add the dangling ports in the design but if there is no reason for a port to be dangling then it should be removed so you should not have any undriven ports and or the dangling ports that's all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos if you have any doubts or any comments that you can provide in the comment section please do like share and subscribe to the channel thank you